I'm so hungry. T Tessa? Why are you here? I told Dante I was hungry, so... I've always wanted to eat here. I'll have my usual, Ota. Y yes right away! Salt, pepper, a blend of red cayenne and spices, and an unidentified liquid. Mayumi's juice with mold? Kuroda Kazuaki's grilled tongue with salt. That's just a stool. Meow. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, you don't know? It's good luck to imitate a cat in front of one of these. Really? Meow? Guess I'll have good luck! Date, you're drooling. Oh, I'm just really hungry. Hey, Date, I've got this video of girls in bikinis washing this armored car. Wanna watch? Absolutely not. Hayashi Samba's Hayashi Vangole. Who? Hey, Tessa. Could you kick that bucket there? Uh, sure. Like this? Yeah, but more. Like this? <laughs> this is awesome! I did not realize there was someone more perverted than Date.
Ring ring. Who's on the phone? Who cares? A chair for baby goats. Why would anyone bring a goat to a restaurant? Hey, want to have a pillow fight? Uh, Tessa, not in the store, please. Hey, what has two hands on its face? A mom playing peekaboo! Uh, yeah, exactly! You're still looking for him? Well, like I told you before, I don't know. She's in the living room. I think she's watching TV. How about you? What are you doing here? I was just doing some meditation, lying on the ground. He means sleeping. Date? Why are you with Tessa? <laughs> we are. Not Shovel Forge. On a date. Oh, a date. Huh. A date? I'm on an investigation, and she wouldn't let me go. Date, I have some delicious fugu eggs. I promise they're not poisoned. Would you like some? No thanks. I'm fine. Yeah. My dad taught me when I was little. You're making me something too, right? Sure. My treat, Date. Omelet rice! Ota's omelet rice is so good it gives me stomach cramps. Is that a compliment? <laughs> You're embarrassing me. Well, Ota appears to have taken it as a compliment. Yeah, I have. Have you met Ota's mother, Mayumi? Yeah, but... I don't think she likes me. That's not true! Mom is just jealous of how pretty you are, Tessa! Not very reassuring. Whether out of jealousy or otherwise, she still doesn't like Iris.
Iris, about your coming back to life. Hold it! What do you mean, coming back to life? Uh... Date jumped into a parallel world where I'm still alive! Tessa... died? Yep! Hey, can you tell me about this parallel world idea in more detail? Oh, sure! How should I explain this? Well... Um... Oh, I know! Let's play rock, paper, scissors! Rock, paper, scissors? Yeah! If we tie, nothing happens. We just shake hands. If I win, you have to give me something. What if I win? I'll do anything! A anything Mm-hmm. Anything. Date, your heart rate is rapidly increasing. Why exactly is that? All right, let's do this. Okay, let's go! One, two, three, shoot! Shoot! Tie. The most boring result. Well, we agreed on the rules. Let's shake hands. Shaky, shaky. We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? We tied and shook hands. But in a different timeline, maybe I got a reward from you. Or maybe you could have seen me naked or something. Why did I choose rock? What exactly were you going to make her do? So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. So you think I jumped from a world in which you were dead to this one where you're alive? That's what I think. Huh. Parallel world, huh? I can't believe it, but... Sure you can. Parallel worlds exist. Do you know about the Mandela effect? Or the Booba Kiki effect? Or the 100 million balls? If I explain that, would you believe me? Sounds really interesting, Tessa. I know some urban legends like that. The Spatial Temporal Man, and The Lost Friend, and the story of two sisters. Yeah, it's sort of like a common experience. A lot of people have experienced waking up in an uninhabited world they've never seen before. And most of them describe seeing the same person. The Spatial Temporal Man. He's supposed to be an ordinary old man wearing work clothes. The Spatial Temporal Man guides people back to the real world. He tells them, this world is not for you, or something. I'd like to meet him someday. So, there's this girl. Let's call her B. She's practicing piano in her room. And her little sister is watching TV in the same room. B asks her to turn the TV volume down so she can hear her piano playing, you know? So B goes back to practicing, playing a little bit. But her sister doesn't turn the volume down. She's not listening at all. So B turns around to scold her. She was really gonna let her sister have it. But she's gone. She's nowhere to be seen. She thinks, huh, I wonder where she went. But then B hears her sister at the door. I'm home. B runs to the front door and sees her sister and her parents standing there. So B asks, when did you go outside? But her mom says, what are you talking about? She went shopping with me. B is really confused by all of this, of course. She asks her little sister about it, and she learns that her favorite TV show was on. And before she went shopping with her mom, she was deciding whether or not she wanted to stay and watch it or not. So depending on her decision, a parallel world was made. 
Yeah. What B saw might have been from the world where her sister stayed behind. There's this kid, A. He's in elementary school. Well, A had this close friend named Suzuki. One day, after school, they're walking home together. A turns around to tell Suzuki a joke, and Suzuki is laughing his butt off. And he's laughing and laughing, and he laughs so hard that his eyes fall out of their sockets. What? Well, they were hanging down out of his eye sockets. The nerves were still connected, but... A is, of course, in shock and doesn't know what to do. Suzuki just takes his eyeballs and jams them back into his eye sockets and keeps walking like nothing happened. So A asks him about it. Like, hey, are you okay? Your eyes fell out. A is really concerned for his friend, you know? But Suzuki just says, yeah, I'm fine. He doesn't say anything about it. And by now, A is really curious, but he's not getting any answers. So they just part ways and go home. The story only gets weirder from here. The next day, A goes to school, and Suzuki's not there. A is confused and asks his teacher about it. Hey, where's Suzuki today? And the teacher says, Suzuki? Who's that? There's no Suzuki in this class. A says, What are you talking about? And he goes and asks all of his classmates about Suzuki. They all say the same thing. I don't know him. There's no Suzuki in this class. So that kid must have jumped into a parallel world without Suzuki. That's what I think. Couldn't Suzuki just be an imaginary friend or something? No, A was really serious about remembering Suzuki. It is weird. And there's no way you can pop your eyeballs back in like that. Well, not necessarily. There's such a thing as a dislocated eye. It actually isn't too hard to put your eye back in if it falls out. Ota is correct. Dislocated eyes are easy to replace in their sockets. As long as none of the nerves or blood vessels were damaged, there are usually no lasting negative effects either. But that doesn't prove this Suzuki exists. Well, I guess not, but... So, this elementary school kid, let's call him C. He goes to school and there's a bunch of things on the floor. Postcards, towels, a coffee cup, rice bowls, a sink, lots of stuff. But C realized that those were all things from his own house. How did they get to the classroom? No one knows. It's not like anyone did it on purpose or there was a thief or anything. Maybe something happened that made two parallel worlds fuse. Yeah, maybe. I know a ton of stories like this. Like being suddenly transported one year into the future, and there's a missing persons report out for you. You look down at your phone, but you realize that it's not yours. It's not the one you remember having. You look through the contacts, and it's filled with names you don't recognize. Sounds scary. There's more, too. Like this town where everyone is Japanese, but they're speaking a completely different language, and all the signs and magazines and stuff have different letters. And it's not like Korea or China. It's the Japan we know, but the language is different. That's a prime example of a parallel world. Date, look at this picture. There's a famous experiment regarding this picture. You show this image to people around the world and ask a question. Which one is Booba and which one is Kiki? Believe it or not, 98% of people asked have the same answer. The rounder one is Booba, 
and the jagged one is Kiki. Isn't that weird? In other words, everyone thinks that Booba is a certain way and Kiki is the other. It applies universally across languages and cultures. It's like something ingrained inside all humans. Like worshipping the sun and the sea. Or thinking that the mother is soft and the father is jagged. Regardless of your culture or background, you probably think this way. It's what Jung called the collective unconscious. There exists a second psychic system of a collective universal and impersonal nature, which is identical in all individuals. That's what Jung said about it. Think of it like bamboo. Bamboo stalks look like individual plants since they're separated. But underground, they're all connected. Human psyches might be like that too, connected at a subconscious level. That's... The parallel world? Yeah! You saved me in the dream, right? And dreams are all about our subconscious minds. So if you follow the roots... You get to another bamboo stalk. Yeah, something like that. This world is full of really interesting stuff. But you know the most interesting thing of all? No, what? That humans exist at all. The universe developed in a very particular way to get here. If things were even slightly different, well, the galaxies and solar system and all of that might not have existed at all. And that means humans would never be born. And even if everything happened exactly like that, the probability of human life developing is extremely low. And yet, here we are. Imagine a box full of ping pong balls, labeled one to a hundred million. Would you be able to pick out the one? Not likely. But what if there were 100 million of you? Well, then one of us would definitely pick up the one. Exactly! The birth of humanity is so improbable that it's basically a miracle. But if there were multiple universes... Then it wouldn't be strange that at least one of them had humans in it. She is describing the anthropic principle. I may have underestimated her intelligence. Do you know Nelson Mandela? Well, yeah! The former president of South Africa. He helped abolish apartheid. He died in 2013, but a strange thing happened. When the news broke, people all over the world thought, didn't Mandela die in prison in 1980? That's the Mandela effect. It's when your memory and history have discrepancies. There are lots of examples. Like the name of this kid's book with the bears having different spellings. Or people remembering that Kennedy was assassinated in a four-seat car. But in our world, he was in a six-seat car. Huh. I thought it was a four-seater too. Or that electric mouse from that video game. You probably remember the tip of its tail being black. It wasn't? Nope, it's all yellow. And the design didn't change. Oh. Lines from movies, company logos, historical events, and little things. The Mandela Effect is everywhere. Why do you think that is? Because those memories are from parallel worlds? That would explain it, I guess. When did you two get so knowledgeable? Oh, I don't know. Tessa is always writing about this stuff on the internet. That's why I decided to research it too. That's how I learned all this stuff. Oh, hey, I know about conspiracies and secret societies too. I find that stuff fascinating. If you want, we could talk about those. Maybe next time. Now where's that omelette rice? Done! Bon appetit!
Tessa, are you okay? I'm fine. My hand slipped. Let's eat! Thanks for the food! That was good! Ota, your omelette rice is seriously the best! Yeah, it was actually really good. Aw, oh, thanks. I owe it to my dad. He taught me well. Let's get going, Iris. Thanks again! Thank you! Come back soon! Shoot! Fuck! Yeah! Date, calm down. You're going to pop a blood vessel. But I made a promise. What do you want me to do? Uh, um, <laughs> if it's no trouble, I want to see your... See what? L let me see. See. I will kill you if you say it. S see. Uh, seal. I, I meant seal. Seal? Not the smoothest recovery. Oh, I get it. You want to see me imitate a seal? No, no, Iris, please. Okay, well, here it goes, I guess. Arr, arr, arr. Nom, 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 nom. Arr, arr, arr. Tessa, what are you doing? We just played rock, paper, scissors, right? You won, and you made me be a seal for some reason. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I got a prize from you. If I had chosen rock or paper... So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. Shoot! Yay! I won! Oh, no, 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 no. You see, this, this looks like scissors, but it's actually paper. That doesn't make any sense. No, why did I throw out scissors? Why? You're really not taking this well. So, I get my prize! I don't have any money. I don't want money. Instead... Yeah? Can you pet my head and say, Iris is a cutie cutie? The cutest person in the whole wide world, a cutie angel. Fine. Iris is a cutie cutie. No, no, no. Put your heart into it. Iris is a cutie cutie, the cutest person in the whole wide world, a cutie angel. played rock, paper, scissors, right? I won and you pet me. But in a different timeline, maybe we tied. Or maybe I obeyed your orders and did something really scandalous. Rewind time, do it now! I do not have that functionality. So those timelines are what I'd call a parallel world. Thank you. 